Hey folks, welcome to Share This Part 2, Professional Approaches to Using Social Media. So in the first part, we took a look at some of the basic elements of social media to be thinking about. Uh, we asked some really important questions about how we as professionals engage or think about engaging in social media and what that means and how we leverage the different platforms for what we want to do. In this in this part, we're going to actually jump into talking about what it means to be a professional on social media and particularly looking at LinkedIn and then also looking at what are some of the practices and things that you can be actively doing in developing a professional digital identity and an engaged professional in, uh, digital identity that networks and uses these types of networks for uh, building out connections, opening up opportunities and the like. So let's get started. So let's first talk about the professional me. What does it mean for us to be professionals on these networks? So the first thing, and we talked a little bit about this in the first video, is really thinking about what it means to present ourselves in these digital environments, how we craft our digital selves and communicate about who we are as professionals. So some of the things I talk about that I think are important to consider is you really should have a LinkedIn account. Uh, it is not the only professional network, social media network out there, but it is like the professional network. It is the one that most people know about. It also has a high SEO value, and that stands for search engine optimization. This means if you fill out your profile and you keep it updated, when people go to Google you, uh, your, your LinkedIn profile is likely going to be one of the things that rises to the top. And professionally speaking, that's probably a good thing, especially if you're using it. And then finally, there's lots of professional spaces within LinkedIn to take advantage of. Uh, there's, of course, your stream there are all the people you connect with and figuring out who are potential connections through those folks. There's lots of groups. Uh, there's lots of things to learn about different uh, businesses and organizations, their profiles. And then there's other opportunities depending on uh, where you live, if you're library or if you still have a connection to a school or as an alumni, you may have access to things like LinkedIn Learning where you can upskill and develop or engage in a variety of really, I mean, really good trainings around all sorts of things from technology to uh, social, you know, to, to professional etiquette and the like. So there's a lot that goes into LinkedIn that makes it why I so strongly recommend it. Doesn't mean it's perfect. Doesn't mean it's good. I would not recommend the uh, the the version of the, the premium version where you have to pay. Uh, I would just recommend that you have the the regular account in which you can still do lots and lots of things. So along those lines, it's probably good to have at least one other social media uh, platform, even if it's for personal use and even if you keep it just on lockdown. Uh, again, this is helping, to, you know, if somebody wants to make sure that if they, if, especially if you have a common name, if they search you, you know, can they see that this person is, is real? Is this person exists more than on this platform? Can I correlate, you know, this with, with other things that can be helpful? It is useful in some professions to have a Twitter account. I won't say every profession and I don't I wouldn't say, you know, it's a must have. And for some for some folks and for some of the work that we do, it's a dumpster fire, 100 percent. But there can be some really useful uh, opportunities to seize there. And I certainly know I've had as I wouldn't say as many, but I would say I've had a decent amount of new or expanded professional opportunities come both from LinkedIn and from Twitter. And then finally, you know, really look around in an industry and find out if there is another specialized network for your profession. So I'm in higher ed, so a good example of that would be academia.edu. So your LinkedIn, um, you want to be regularly using it regardless of the job search. One way to think about this is keeping your finger on the pulse of both your industry and the professional world as a whole and seeing what your colleagues are doing, keeping an eye out for what people are sharing, what kind of conversations are happening, because this is this is its own form of staying up to date in in the realm of, of work and using LinkedIn is a good way to do that. It's also useful because, again, it communicates your professional online presence. It, it shows that you are a being that exists here um, and that you are thinking about you know what goes on, what does it mean to work in the 21st century in the digital realm. And then the profile, I strongly recommend filling it to the brim. Not everybody will agree with this. This is my own hot take, but 
most of the jobs we apply for, we submit a resume. And a resume is a very, you know, if you're, depending on how you do it, it's either one or two pages. And for, for some folks, that's not a lot given what we've done or given where we are in our career. So I see it as if somebody is coming to my LinkedIn profile, if it's somebody in relation to a job, well, they already know the highlights that are in the, the, the resume. But if I really want them to have a good deep dive and understand like the complexity or the background of myself, like I want to make sure I include as many things as I think is relevant and important and valuable about me as a professional. So that's why I say fill it to the brim, fill it with lots of different, uh, everything from volunteer opportunities to awards, to trainings, certifications, everything you can think of that represents you, your interests, or things that you hope people will be associating you with, put it in there. Uh, I think that can only help you because it isn't just people can find that if they are looking at your resume, but also if people are looking for you for what, you know, for other professional opportunities, they can get a better sense of your full school skill set if that profile is filled. Other things, your profile picture, uh, it should be a headshot or mid-level shot. You don't want it to be, you don't want a picture that you can't really see who you are. This is your first impression. Uh, and this is this is 100% uh, a problem of our culture's obsession with uh, appearances. But ultimately, this is also your opportunity to present yourself in the best way you want. Uh, and so think about how how you can use your, your, your camera, what you can use for your background, what you can use for your, your outfit to make sure that you are presenting who you who you want to be in that that moment. Uh, you want clear and quality picture. You don't want a grainy image. A grainy image is going to communicate. Again, it's, this is there's superficiality to this, but it will communicate like there's something hiding or this person isn't up to date with technology or knowing how to use phones or, or the like. So keep that in mind. How do you make sure, you know, making sure that what they see uh, is a good, clear picture? Make sure you're in a re relevant space. So it's great if you're at the beach, but unless your job entails something to do with the beach, try to find a background that makes sense. Uh, it can be it can be generic. It can be like a white or a off-white background. It could be a brick wall uh, or any kind of wall. But try to try to think about how can the image open up an opportunity for them to think about you as a professional in the area that you want to be or in the area that you are. And then have an intentional look or smile. Saying a smile is problematic for lots of different reasons, given how uh, given how particularly women are so strongly to smile and that there's certain issues in that invocation. But I think having some intentional look or having a smile or having, making sure that again, the look that you give is intentional, that you, you're putting thought about how you want to be perceived. And then regularly update it. Uh, first, so that people know it's fresh, right? So people know that you are on there and that you have been engaging. Uh, and this might include making little, you know, little tweaks here or there. Or one thing I do is I have a Google Calendar reminder. So every month uh, I get a reminder of update your profile. And so I think about what have I done in the last month that should go up there. And then also by updating it regularly within its own search engine optimization, uh, it means your profile goes higher. So if somebody is looking for people that are in your industry, one of the ways it's going to prioritize the results is people who have been updating or uh, on LinkedIn more often. If you haven't been in link on LinkedIn in six months, the pro the the search engine is going to say, "Oh, this person hasn't been on here. What's the point of making them higher in the ranks uh, if somebody's looking for a person in this industry now?" All right, so that's more of how you kind of get up, you get settled, and and really kind of put yourself out there. But then there's the engaged professionally, how you conduct or engage yourself in these spaces. So again, let's talk about some of the musts. Uh, you should be regularly posting content and uh, discussing your field, uh, particularly on LinkedIn and where relevant on Twitter. I have a, you know, my, my template for this is finding a read, you know, an article or a video or something that I just recently read or watched. I will grab a money quote. I will grab something that I feel like really captures what 
grabbed me about that article. I'll paste it into the post. I'll provide a little commentary at the start, then the quote, make sure it's in quotation marks, then the link, then whatever hashtags. And what I find is this is really useful because it lets people know what, what for me is important about that article, what I'm thinking about that article, and of course the link so they can go and take a look if they so choose. But there's lots of ways of doing this, but just thinking about how to make sure you're regularly posting uh, and, uh, and engaging in a conversation in these spaces. It's also, again, it plays with the search engine optimization. It also more strongly connects you to the terms and the, the content that you're posting. So if you're working in a particular industry and you're posting things about that, that's going to also impact that search engine optimization. Also, there are lots of pages and groups, both in LinkedIn and Facebook, that you can join and learn a lot, network a lot, and just find out about opportunities you wouldn't have otherwise. Uh, so be sure you go on to those and make sure that you engage with people in those groups. Things to avoid, and I'll say this probably a few times, uh, being the know-it-all, feeling like you are the sole authority on whatever it is that you're discussing, uh, and trying to always make room for the conversation for others to chime in. And then the other is being a spammer. So I'm encouraging you to regularly post content, but I'm not saying you should be posting you know, the same articles time and again, or you should be posting every five minutes. Really you know, trying to find a good balance of sharing with your network and not trying to just be at the front of the line for everybody as they come into that space. A couple things to be thinking about or things that you should be doing as an engaged professional uh, person is, on these networks is regularly reading uh, industry news, blogs, social media outlets, and that's where you're going to get a lot of that content that you can then share. Uh, you might also think about creating your own content, right? So maybe you want to do a blog or YouTube or Reels and start to share that. I've seen a lot. I do this myself on my blog. I have friends who use YouTube and Reels a lot to kind of share, uh, particularly Reels on Facebook or, or Instagram or TikTok videos, you know, short, concise videos that sum up either hot takes on the industry or insightful ways of navigating different processes. Also, learn the relevant hashtags in your industry. All industries have a variety of hashtags that many people are regularly using. Try to understand or find out what, what those are and be sure to take advantage of those or use those when appropriate. Uh, in the resource that I provide for this for these videos, I include a, I, I, the resource includes links to different places you can get further research and insight on hashtags. I encourage making use of that. And then make sure you share your content across social media. So if you have more than one platform, make sure whatever you make, you can share across different platforms. So if you have a YouTube video, you, you know, you do want to share it on Facebook you do want to share it on LinkedIn or share it in those places that feel appropriate. So you, maybe you don't want to share it on, on Facebook because you that is where you just solely have friends. But you may share it on Twitter and you may share it on LinkedIn. Just be thinking about where you can share it and making sure that you do, but making sure you're not oversharing. And then finally, uh, be humble, respectful, and gracious. The internet is filled with people who can be mean, obnoxious, rude, uh, dismissive, all of those things. You can't control any of that. You can only control how you act. And in these spaces, you know, especially on places like LinkedIn, you're presenting yourself as a professional. So think about what that means and think about how you want to be seen among the uh, within these spaces. All right. So that's how you're kind of working on your own profile and your own feed. But what does it mean to then go beyond that and actually network that professional me? So again, here we got some musts, right? You should respond to people who respond to you, right? Make sure you have dialogue. If somebody takes the time to share something or to say something, make sure you return in kind. Uh, reach beyond your known network. And so this is, again, where hashtags come in handy. This is where groups come in handy. Finding people that aren't just people you know, but people beyond that and building those relationships and learning from them. Uh, find where conversations are taking place and go there regularly. Uh, in my industry, higher education, they're in, in instructional design. There's lots of really, there's lots of rich places that this happens. Uh, it's often there are uh, Twitter chats that happen around hashtags. And so I'll go onto Twitter and either read past conversations or join in ones that are coming up. Really take the time and opportunity to learn from others. 
either by reading and engaging in the content that they post or by, you know, reaching out and saying, hey, I really liked X. Can you tell me more about it? Uh, giving that opportunity to really build relationships and to build your own knowledge. And then take responsibility when you make mistakes. We're all going to make mistakes on social media. It is, I mean, we all make mistakes in our day-to-day -day lives. We're going to make them there. The importance is to own it and identify and where appropriate, make an apology and make an appropriate apology. Don't take the, you know, don't do the faux apology. I'm sorry you were offended kind of apology. Make sure what you're doing shows you as a, as a full professional. Things to avoid. Uh, don't do too much too fast. So I'm making all these recommendations and a lot of them are things I have gleaned, I have picked up that I've been slowly accumulating over a decade of being on LinkedIn and over 15 years of being on social media. So just think about this as yes, you want to you want to in, you want to try different things, but you don't want to try all of the things at once because that inevitably leads uh, to the next, which is abandoning for long stretches. You'll get over, you try to do too much too fast, you get overwhelmed, you decide to step away, and now it's six months later, and you're like, I haven't touched my LinkedIn, I haven't done anything, you know, I don't have as much uh, visibility in this space. So just be thinking about that. Think about how you can try, you know, one or two things every other week and slowly build up a, a set of practices that work for you. And then also don't get too lost in the numbers. It's very, because all of this is quantified, how many likes, how many reshares, how many views, don't get lost in those numbers. Inevitably, it, that is a losing game in terms of you yourself feeling validated about what you're doing. Um, uh, if you're looking to build an audience, if you're looking to build a strong network, that takes time, that takes energy, that takes not focusing too much on exactly how much, but just really thinking about what are the quality, what is the level of quality of your interaction with people in your professional network, and what are the new things that emerge out of it. So what about shoulds? Well, you want to look for opportunities. These are both direct and indirect. A direct opportunity, you know, that's a job that pops up. An indirect opportunity is an opportunity to have a conversation with somebody that's in a field you're interested in. In and of itself, it might not yield something tangible, but you may build a relationship. You may build opportunities for future collaborations or future opportunities. For myself, the indirect has worked much, much more, has been much uh, a much bigger return than the direct opportunity. If you're looking to create content and you're looking to put stuff out there to really demonstrate your uh, your understanding or your engagement with the with the industry, interview people uh, in your field for content. Like it is whether it's for a blog or you know your YouTube channel or you're starting a podcast, just reach out to people and say, hey, I want to have a rich conversation with you about X or about Y. Not everybody will say yes, but there's plenty of people out there that you're going to get a yes from. And it's, it's enjoyable. It's great. Everybody likes to have conversations about the work that they do and be able to share their own insights uh, as a professional. Make sure you're not just sharing things, but you're also commenting on other people's posts and content. Don't just you know create one-way relationships, but make sure you go back and forth. Uh, I always encourage looking for opportunities for collaboration, whether that's cross blog or cross YouTube promotions, guest features on on YouTube or on a blog uh, on a uh, podcast. But really think about how you can be in conversation with others and how you can ca capture that. And finally, and this is one that I don't think gets used as much, is give recommendations on LinkedIn. Give them unsolicitedly, uh, unsolicited. That is, you know, for a long while, once a month, I would go onto LinkedIn and I would look through my, you know, my, my list of connections. I'd find five people and I'd just give them a recommendation. And I'd make sure it's true. I'd make sure it was a robust, tangible recommendation. It wasn't just like, oh, he was great. I really enjoyed working with him but really articulate, oh, you know, this person, she really understood what, you know, it meant to be an inclusive leader or really articulate exactly the skills and ways that that person showed up for you and, and why you're giving that recommendation. You're not do you're, so I'm going to say, you're not doing this so you get recommendations, although that will happen. You're doing this because this is part of what happens here is you create these networks, you create these bonds and better connect with the people out there. 
All right, some other advice to keep in mind as you're navigating what it means to be a, an engaged professional uh, person in these digital spaces. Find the nodes in your network and interact. There are people in your network that are probably heavy or, or, or very strong nodes. And what we mean by that is lots and lots of people interact with them. Uh, I have this one friend who, whenever he posts something on social media, like in a half hour, he will have 500 comments, maybe not 500, he'll have 200 comments in lots of rich, rich discussion. He'll be deeply engaged with it, but what you can see is that this person knows knows how to do conversations in these spaces. And what I am encouraging you to do is really look around for who those are and it, not just interact with them, but really learn and observe and see what they're doing and how they're doing it. And you'll find there's more than one. And so really understand and learn from those folks what you can do to also be a more engaged uh, professional person in, in digital spaces. Again, find the right groups, pages, hashtags, uh, you know, bookmark them, save them in a, in, a note, in a notepad, just make sure they're ready and on hand for you to do a regular perusal and engagement across these spaces tag appropriately. Uh, I mentioned that in the first video. I'll reiterate here. You know, if you're tagging people, companies, images, whatever, make sure you're always doing a check about appropriateness, whether it is, are you divulging people's privacy? Are you trying to get the attention of a company that you are deciding to rant about? Um, just always double check why and what's driving, driving the, the need to tag. Ask questions and provide answers. So regularly engage in, in trying to find out and, and be appreciative of the people that give you answers. And then also try to provide answers where where it's possible. You don't want to provide it in a way that's, as I said before, you're the know-it-all, but you do want to, uh, look to look to help others who are asking things. And then throughout all of this, be respectful regardless. Uh, Again, so easy to get mad, angry. This is in some ways, so much of social media is geared towards uh, reactionary responses, but always give yourself the time to pause and ask yourself, if, is this being the best version of you that's possible when, when interacting with other people? And to be clear, I have failed at this many a time. Uh, I'm not saying any of us can be perfect, but I think we can think about what does it mean to be respectful and be professional in these spaces. And then, as I mentioned before, watching that line between being relevant and being spammy, uh, trying not to inundate people with too many messages uh, for many different reasons besides they'll mute you and therefore you no longer are really having as much of a uh, connection as before. And, you know, it just, there's so much else out, so much else out there already being produced, there's no need to further inundate, inundate folks. All right, so that's all for this two-part session. I hope folks enjoyed it, found it useful. Uh, as I mentioned, there are the resources there at that, that uh, short link of bit.ly forward slash share with a capital S, this with a capital T, and resource with a capital R, uh, all one word. And I hope you find that useful. I hope you found this video useful. If you want more tips or more ideas, I'm always interested in making new content. So feel free to uh, leave a message. Thank you so much.